everyone, Blender Pirate Generality here. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create water swirl. All right, so in order to create a water swirl, we do not necessarily need to simulate fluid. We can actually fake it quite easily and this using EV. So let's actually start with a blank screen like I have right now. Blank, you know, brand new Blender scene. I do have my screen gas keys on. All right, so we're going to delete the cube and we're going to add a plane. All right, so if you go into the modifier panel and add a ocean, all right, you can see that it automatically generates some mesh for you. Now, this is not what we need because this does not give us any control over the mesh. We do want some control over the mesh. So in order to do that, you simply switch the geometry from generate to displace. So now it takes in consideration the size of the object as well as its divisions. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter into edit mode by pressing tab and we're going to scale that to something like 10. All right. So from there, I'm going to add on by going under edge going to subdivide this by like 50 or something like that. So if you expand this and add 50 divisions, this is what it looks like. From there, we're going to press control or alt and select the edge there and then shift alt and select the edges around. And from there, I'm going to do an extrude and I'm going to right click it out. So it's extruded, but it's just no transform app into it. So from there, I'm going to press S to scale that. And I'm going to scale that considerably. So it's much bigger, like three times or four times the size, something like that, just so we have something around. And then from there, I'm going to press Control R. I'm going to scroll the wheel so we end up with quite a few divisions. And then from there, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to do the same thing from closer to backward. And I'm going to add a little bit less as I move out, uh, simply to give me some sort of level of details, if you will. So whatever is close has more detail than whatever is back. All right, so that should do the trick. So what we want is we want you know the most detail closer to the camera. So let's actually position the camera. You can simply press Control Alt and then Zero on the numpad, and the camera is just gonna snap pretty much where I want it. All right. So this is where the camera is. All right. So I'm gonna tab out of edit mode and then from there I'm going to go to the actual shaded mode and I'm going to actually go to object and then shade smooth so the water is smooth and then from there let's actually go in here or here and turn off wireframe and then let's actually go here and add shadow and then cavity and switch it to boat so we can see our waves a little bit better what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a subdivision surface and I'm going to bring it up. So the ocean will take in consideration the subdivision and it's actually going to make the ocean related to that. So here in the resolution, I'm going to bring that up to something like 20. So we've got, you know, close water detail type like. And right, so if you go to the camera view, the camera right now needs to be set properly. It's not properly set. So let's actually select the camera, go to the camera here and change the focal length to 90. Also make the end distance something like a thousand so it sees farther. So that way you don't end up with weird clippings. All right. So later on, we're going to set up the depth of field, but for now we don't need it. All right. So what we want now is that water to be animatable. And as you can see, we've got more detail at the center and less detail as you move out of the camera. Now, this is how you would want a scene to be set up for something like this. Now, the water itself is a modifier, and the modifier can be animated by animating the time here. All right. So if I bring the viewport back to zero, so we have maybe something more real time when we scroll, uh, we can actually set the type of water a little bit. So right now we've got a resolution of 50. We've got a spatial size that is probably a little bit too big. So we're going to scroll it down to something like 25. I find it's good. All right, from there, we've got a choppiness and we have a scale. I'm going to bring the scale down to 0.5. So as you can see, it's a repeating pattern. All right. So now if I add some details in there, you can see the type of water that we have. All right. 
So if you want, you can make it more choppy and you'd get, you know, those waves that are closer like that. It's really up to you, the type of water that you want to get. You know, experiment with these a little bit and you'll get some different result. But what you need to know is that this is what animates it. All right, as you can see, it animates the water. All right, so if you want it to be real time, uh, I like to set the render at two and the viewport at zero. So that way, when I'm working, it's real time. I just don't get as much detail as I'm working, but I can see the water actually working. All right, so what we need now is to be able to create the swirl in the middle. And in order to do that, we need to add another modifier. Let's add a displace modifier. And what we're going to do is we're gonna bring the mid level to zero and we're gonna add a new texture and we're gonna go inside the texture here and we're gonna switch that to a blend mode. And as you can see, it automatically creates a displacement for you. Now, this would be a perfect way to actually, you know, recreate splitting of the waters by using, you know, a displacement and a linear blend. Uh, in our case, we just want to create a hole uh, that actually sinks in uh, so we can make a water swirl. In order to do that, we're gonna switch this to a spherical. And right now it points outward uh, which is fine we're going to fiddle it and then we're going to go invert it after and we're going to switch to colors and we're going to use color ramp also it's not big enough so what we need to do is to go back to the modifier and switch this from local to uv and as you can see now it's all this area that is affected all right so you can also you know bring it in the minus so i'm going to bring it to like minus 10. i want this world to go deep and as you can see it creates some interesting patterns with the ocean or in conjunction with the ocean modifier it sort of amplify those details which is cool because we want those in order to create the streaks now it's way too sharp so you want it to sort of blend in in order to do that let's go edit the actual ramp All right so let's go to the color ramp here and let's get rid of the alpha here in the black and let's switch this to a b spline so what we're going to do is we're going to actually just go like this and then boom, we've got that sort of swirl look. And there you go. So now all we need to do is, you know, to add a swirl inside there. So there you go. So to make this swirl, we need a vertex group. So I'm going to jump into edit mode. Or actually, you don't even need to go into edit mode. Let's just, you know, go here at a vertex group. And from there, go to object and wait paint. And let's actually paint the vertex group. There you go. So, and then let's actually blend this a little bit by blurring it out. And so I'm going to grab the blur tool, zoom out a little bit. And, you know, just blur, 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 blur. And that should do the trick. And let's go to the object mode again. So now what we're gonna do is add another modifier on top of that. So let's go add a simple deform. And the simple deform, we're gonna you know, make it work with the group. We're gonna switch this to the Z axis and we're gonna bring the angle way up, 360 degree. And we have a water swirl, as you can see. All right, so from there, so if you want to edit the shape a little bit, you can, you know, do a mix of editing this. As you can see, it's a narrower or wider by simply changing the ramp here. All right. So this looks pretty good to me. Now, so if we go here and animate the water value, we actually have an animated swirl already. Now the problem that we have is that the swirl is totally stationary. And right now my camera is way too close. So I'm gonna press N. I'm gonna to go to view and lock camera to view and I'm just gonna zoom out. And so we can see here, we've got the water swirl. All right. I'm gonna press N again. So now we've got the water swirl there. What do we want to do is we want the water swirl to wobble because right now it's just remaining there. And that looks odd because it usually doesn't, doesn't just remain there. Now the effect is there in terms of water uh, and the way it moves in, uh, but it's you know just stationary. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a empty. 
All right, so let's add a plane axis there that's going to do the trick. So if you go down all right, to the simple deform, you can actually specify an object empty here. And then if I go here, so I'm going to do all G on that. If I grab the empty and I move it, you can see that it allows me to change the start rotation of the actual effect or the deformer itself. All right. If I move it that way, it's the same thing. You can get that sort of effect. So in order to animate this, the easiest way is to actually just put it on the side a little bit, add an, another empty. So we're going to use like a sphere, for example, and I'm going to parent that empty to that empty. So control P object. So now if I rotate this empty, it rotates it for me. And, you know, it can also rotate in more than one direction. And you don't necessarily want that. In this case, I just wanted to rotate this way. All right. So all I need to do now is to animate that actual rotation axis, which is the Z axis. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to pop a timeline open. So I'm going to open a timeline and in here I'm going to open the graph editor and I've set my preferences to have my default interpolation to be linear. That's really up to you, but it makes it easier in terms of, you know, adding some quick animation. I'm going to insert a single keyframe here and I'm going to press N and I'm going to go to modifier and I'm going to add a generator and I'm going to set it to 0.1. All right, so now if I play this animation, it wobbles the animation for me. Now we want the water to also animate. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the water. We're going to go on the time here. I'm going to bring it to zero and I'm going to add a keyframe here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a generator. I'm going to set it to something like 0.5. Not too fast. Let's go 0.1. There you go. So now we've got animated water with an animated swirl that wobbles. Now it should probably wobble the other way around, but that doesn't really matter because the effect is now there. So now all we need to do is to set the scene in order to be able to see what we want to see. All right. So if we go to the uh, look dev mode and select the water, we can actually stop the animation. And let's keep it at the lowest res. As you can see in subdivision, I have it set to zero, but rendered to two. And right, so that, that's fine for now. Let's actually go and add a material that we're going to call water. It's in caps. It doesn't really matter. So all we need to do now is turn off specular, make the roughness at zero, put the transmission all the way up, put the roughness all the way up, and set the IOR to 1.33, which is the IOR of water. Also, you want to come down here and put space or screen space refraction on. If you go into the render panel, add ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflection and refraction. Now, in order to have something to refract, we need to add a bottom to our water. In order to do that, I'm simply going to add a plane. And right, so I added another plane. I'm going to scale that plane about the same size as our water. And I'm going to go to the front view and I'm actually going to put it sort of like this. Right, so right now, where's my camera? My camera's there. So I've put that on the right side. So that's perfect. All right. So now I need to add a texture on there. So I'm just going to quickly add a texture from my library. So we're going to add a material to this. And let's call it underwater ground or something like that. And then from there, we're actually going to use the uh, built in UVs that comes up with a plane. And I'm going to open up my CC texture folders that you can download which is somewhere in my videos. The link is inside there. And from there, I'm going to go inside terrain, soil and debris. And I'm going to use, let's say this one should do the trick. And I'm going to pop that in there. I'm going to include that inside a link inside the download files with the files at the end. So I'm going to plug that inside color 
and I'm going to turn off specular for this. So it gives me something to refract underneath. All right. So if I go here, you can sort of see the refraction going on already. Now we need to, you know, add some glints of light or set up the render in environment variable. So we've got the scene lights in there so we can see that we can also change the uh, rotation of the background to have something like this, which is a lot better. And uh, we might not need the light at all. So that's fine. And then from here, if we go select this and add a subdivision on it, we've got a more realistic version of that water. So if I want to render this, the render won't work. Why? Because, you know, it's not the look dev. So what we need to do is we need to go under the world here. We're going to add a texture coordinate. We're also going to add a mapping vector. We're going to plug the generating inside the mapping vector. We're also going to add a environment texture. And for the environment texture, you click on open here. If you browse to your program file, wherever you have your Blender Foundation installation, or if you have the zip, go to that file. Go to the data file, Studio Lights World, and then we have the 4S EXR there that we can actually use. It's there for us to use, so let's use it. So now I can go here and set the rotation the way I want it here. So we have the exact same look as the look dev. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, so let's actually set the camera maybe a little bit better. Something like this should do the trick. Actually, let's just rotate that like this. And let's add a light source instead. Simply because we can control the size that the actual streaks are going to be if we actually use a light instead of the HDRI for that look. So I'm going to click that off and I'm going to add a sunlight that I'm going to bring all the way back here. I'm going to make it point toward the camera. Now if I go to the camera, you can see those streaks of light right there. All right, so if you select the light and you know put that to something like 4 and change the size of the degree, you can sort of get that you know end of sun going down the water or something like that. And then from there, uh, let's go to the bloom here and set the threshold 0.75, set the size down a little bit, and maybe the intensity as well, just so we get glints. Then from there, if you press F12 to render, it's actually going to render what we've set up here, which is this. So now all we need to do is to animate this and render this, and you have some fairly real looking water. Now, in order to animate the swirl starting, let's go back to the shaded mode and let's switch this back to zero that way. All right. So what we need to do is we need to animate the displacement. All right. So as well as the strength of the deform here, the 360 degree that adds that look, right? So all we need to do now is to set this to zero here. Let's go to frame, let's say 10. And let's insert the keyframe. And let's go to frame, let's say 30. And let's put that at 360. And let's insert the keyframe there. And let's say, let's insert that keyframe here again. And here, let's bring that down to zero and insert the keyframe. So that way we put the swirl on. So now we have to also animate the displacement. So if I go here, about here, I'm going to bring the displace to zero. As you can see, it gives me that pinching. It's exactly something that looks like a water surface breaking tension. Right, so I'm going to bring that about here and I'm going to insert the keyframe here and then I'm going to go about here and I'm going to put a keyframe to minus 10 
and insert the keyframe. And about here, I'm going to reinsert that keyframe. And then here, I'm going to bring that to zero, reinsert the keyframe. So now, if I play the animation, we get a starting of a swirl. It swirls for a little bit. And then suddenly, the swirl disappears. So if we look at it from the camera, this is what we get. So how do we keep the attention there uh, for the viewer? It's fairly simple. We add some sort of depth of field. So I'm going to bring uh, the subdivisions again. And we're going to select the camera. And if you go to the camera here and put depth of field on, you can select the focus object. I'm going to select the second empty because that one doesn't move, it just rotates. And I'm going to put the f-stop something like 0 0.05. So whatever is close is blurry. Whatever is far is blurry and whatever is in the middle is not too bad. Now let's actually try to zoom in a little bit and let's see where the water swirl should be. So if I bring the swirl into play, I want to be able to catch the light in that swirl. So maybe bring the threshold down a little bit of the bloom. Oh, that won't make a difference. Let's actually edit the light. So if I go to the light, so grab the sunlight, go to the light and make it one instead, maybe two instead, and change the size here. So we get more like little glints instead of too much. And that should actually look pretty good. Yeah, there you go. So you've got some pretty cool looking water. And the closer you get to the empty, the more you've got the effect of the depth of field. So we're simply going to choose an angle that we like. And then from there, you know, we need to make a render. So you specify the folder where you want it to render and RGB will do fine for something like that. And then you render it, you know, and you don't need all these samples. Simply 10 samples should actually do the trick. So if I press F12 for a quick render, as you can see, it takes, you know, two seconds to actually render this. So it won't take too long to actually render the entire thing. So I'm just going to actually render it and press pause while rendering it. So I'm going to go render, render animation, and I'm going to pause the video while it's rendering. All right, so that literally took five minutes to render out 250 frames of water. And as you can see, uh, 1.93 seconds, so it's not exactly two seconds. Uh, let's actually take a look at the animation. That's probably going to pop on my other screen, so let me bring it here. And boom, here's the animation that we just rendered out. Oop, it finished. And then it loops again. Boom, we've got the water starting. And there you go. So this is how you, you know, make a water swirling animation inside Eevee. Uh, that looks, you know, fairly plausible really quick. It's all faked. You know, uh, there's other ways to actually uh, use water uh, and, you know, fake certain things like little wavelets. Uh, for example, you would have a dock and you'd have, you'd want to make it look like the, it's part of the water. So you'd have those little wave. Well, you could also do this uh, by faking it instead of simulating it. Uh, I think simulation should only be used if you need, you know, extreme splashes and water displacements of some kind. Uh, but, you know, for simple effect like twirls and, you know, little waves, this actually does the trick quite well. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, and I'll see you in some other tutorial. Peace. Mm -hmm.